Welcome back, everybody, to the OPT Network. The hardest working doctor in probably the state of Louisiana joins us this morning, Dr. David Holcomb. Dr. Holcomb, good morning and welcome. Uh, it's always nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. I really mean that, Dr. Holcomb. I think you are probably one of the hardest working people. You're just some of everywhere. Yes, um, yes. We're we're now reopening the shelter. Uh, we never actually closed the shelter. We've been open for forty five consecutive days, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, people that are stragglers from Laura, and now we're opening for Delta. So, and that and COVID, we're still COVID testing. Uh, day sixty eight, I believe, for that. So. We're busy. And keeping some long hours. Tell us what the atmosphere is like on the inside of the shelter, especially, you know, with the virus. What does that look and feel like? Well, the, the shelter was actually never designed to be a, uh, a COVID um, type environment. And so uh, the maximum number of people you can have there is 3,500. Wow. And yeah, wow. And in our our section, we can have up to 500, and those are medically special special needs people, sick people, who require some kind of medical care. But the problem is with COVID, um, if the people are actually staying there, then they have to be distanced, socially distanced, mm -hmm. and uh, even in the medical special needs part. So that reduces the capacity of the of the shelter tremendously because you just can't can't put the same number of people in there. And the governor really doesn't want to use it as a shelter. And so the folks that are coming there are being redirected to hotels in New Orleans. But now with this current problem, that we can't use that as a solution. So this has been a very complex um, operation. Why doesn't the governor want to use it as a shelter? Because of congregating people together. So, um, and, and that makes sense because even when we had a couple of hundred people, it's very difficult to keep people distant. And so your risk of spreading COVID in that situation is very, very high. And so he, he would prefer to have them individually in a hotel in New Orleans in their, with their family units than scattered around in a shelter, even if they're distancing themselves. Mm -hmm. So... You know, the president went on record saying that the virus was turning the corner, but now he has the virus and a lot of his staff members have the virus. And we can clearly see that the virus is not turning the corner, but we are headed toward flu season. Yes. How do we unpack all of that? Well, um, there are a number of states that the rates are actually going up. That is fortunately not the case in Louisiana. Uh, and so this, this is not finished mm -hmm. and cruising right into flu season is a real problem because most of the symptoms of flu and COVID actually overlap. And there's very few symptoms that are actually unique to one or the other. The only one that's actually unique is the loss of uh, smell and taste seems to be very specific for COVID. But remember 50% of the people with COVID have no symptoms at all. And many of the president's entourage um, became infected without knowing it and were picked up because they do regular testing. And isn't that the scary thing that they anybody could be asymptomatic, not I mean, you could be infected and just not know it for a good long time. Or ever. And. So that's why, you know, the whole mask deal and social distancing, I know people are tired of it. I know they think it's somewhat exaggerated and it's not going to kill you anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, so they don't want to do it anymore. But, but it is helpful and it has helped. And it caused a huge decrease in the number of, uh, the, you know, decrease in the rate of acquisition of the disease uh, where it's been implemented correctly. So people don't, you know, don't throw this. It'll also protect against the flu, which is also airborne. Mm -hmm. So, or droplet borne. So this is no time to be saying, no, I'm not interested in this. Uh, right. It's done. I'm done with it. You may be psychologically done with it, but COVID is not done with us. What do you make, Dr. Holcomb, of the people who say, yeah, COVID is still here, but now the word is the strain is different. Like it's not affecting people the way that it did initially. Is there anything to that? 
No. <laughs> the, okay. You know, th th this does happen with, you know, viruses that may mutate and so forth. But the fact is that, that the original people who died, now remember, 200,000 people have already died from this. This is a, that's the equivalent of a small city. And the, initially, it was people that were older, mm -hmm. that had heart conditions, lung conditions, whatever. And so you have a very high mortality in the 70 and above group. But what it did is it, it sort of shifted over into the younger groups. So in, in groups of uh, very, very young children, there's only been four deaths in Louisiana, and that's been very um, static. So it moved into populations where people don't tend to get as sick. But that's not because it mutated. That's because it migrated into a whole different population group. And that same group are the same 18 to 25-year-olds who will get more sexually transmitted diseases and have drunk driving and drug use. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a high-risk population. And so it's very difficult for them to understand that they may live, but they'll give it to their grandma who may not. Mm -hmm. And so people, as we're approaching flu season, are, I guess, trying to figure out, is it really safe or is it going to help me to get the flu shot? And what say you about that? Yes. Yes, it will help you. And yes, you should get it. And yes, we're giving it on October 16th at the drive through here. And uh, we did 900 shots here last year. So wow. we hope to do even more than that this year. Um, and it is useful because COVID does not have a vaccine yet. So you can't protect yourself for that. You can wear your mask, you can stay distant, but you can't take a vaccine. Flu, you have a vaccine and it does work and it is safe and it is effective. So combining those two diseases, the flu and COVID is really a bad idea because they tend to be synergistic. Well, there's been a remark they that- They tend to be uh, synergistic, what does that mean? Synergy is when it actually you have two things and you add them together and it makes it worse. Right. Okay. So, so um, getting the both both of them together is a, just a terrible idea. Sure. And an average flu season will kill between three thousand and thirty thousand people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So people die from the flu. Right. But COVID has killed two hundred thousand. Right. 200,000 and counting. What do you and make counting. what do you make Dr. Holcomb of the president? You know, he he's come out and they've said that you know, he is uh COVID-19 positive and you know, but he's saying that it's not a big deal and I think that people are going to be inclined to believe that maybe the strain has changed and maybe it is as he's saying a, a, a just a really bad flu. What do what do you say about that? Well, you know, not all 74-year-olds who get COVID will die. But all 74-year-olds that get COVID are not going to get uh, privileged treatments such as monoclonal antibodies and early dexamethasone treatment and rem um, remdesivir. Uh, not everyone is going to get that. And, and so it's a little odd that anyone would want to to dim, to diminish the severity of the illness when you have two hundred thousand people dead, uh, I, I I don't understand that. But um, I I don't know what to say. Sure, but you know, we just I, I just want from you and and the people who were who were on the front lines to to tell people that. The strain hasn't changed. The virus yeah. hasn't changed. And, you know, we should still be. And everybody is tired. People are tired of social distancing. You can see people gathering more. You can see people trying to go back to their lives the way that we once did. But the virus is still the virus. Yes. It doesn't care if you're the president or if you or a janitor or whatever. It doesn't care. It, it's, uh, it doesn't care about your party affiliation and it seeks every opportunity to, to uh, go, jump from one person to the next. Mm. That's its survival. And so wow. when you have events that bring many people together, 
together with minimal distance and no masks, you're playing Russian roulette. And yes, you may not get it. Yes, you may get it and feel fine, but you can also die. And uh, it's just, why would people want to take unnecessary risks with their health? It's a public health problem. It's not a political problem. Wow. And so flu shots free starting October 16th? Well, we have a different calendar for different places, and I believe I sent you the calendar. So okay. at, at every, um, it happens to be the 16th of October here in uh, Rapids, and mm -hmm. it's between 8 and 3, but it's also being held at, at all of our other health units, but different dates. Okay, good. So, so um, people will be able to do this elsewhere. <clears throat> it's an excellent deal. You don't have any out-of-pocket expense. If you have insurance, we can, you know, some get some money back by charging your insurance, but the, if you don't have your card, it doesn't matter. So you don't have to get out of your car. You don't have to go in the doctor's office. You don't have to go in the pharmacy. You just sit there and get your shot and move on. There you go. Dr. Holcomb, thank you so much. I'm glad that you're staying safe and staying well. Thank you for all that you do. Well, safe, I'm trying. Well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I could use some extra sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hopefully you'll get some. Thank you a lot. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, stay safe and get come get your flu shot. We will. Dr. David Holcomb, everybody, stay on point. We're back after this.